Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Mediocre Mechanic. Today we're going to be replacing the clutch master cylinder in my 1988 Chevy R30 dump truck. I've got a brand new clutch master cylinder from O'Reilly's. This thing was $42.99. It's got a lifetime warranty. And I bought some brake fluid, DOT3. Uh, this thing was like $8.00. Brake fluid's pretty expensive now. It is nice and breezy out here for the middle of August. Feels great. We have got an ant problem. I put some taro ant baits out here last night. I have sprayed my yard. I have treated my yard with granulars and I cannot stop these ants. They're really bad over here. These uh, taro ant baits, they work great. I use them around the house sometimes. Give it a day or two and they'll all be gone. They'll be dead. I mean, I guess I could have sprayed this truck, but I'm going to be working in here. I didn't want to be spraying a bunch of chemicals and stuff in here and then be breathing all that in. So here is the clutch master cylinder. I'm guessing that this thing is uh, frozen or seized up inside because the rod inside is bent. That's it right there. You can see how curved it is. When you push the pedal, it just bends the rod some more. It doesn't push it into the master cylinder. I got some pliers here. Now we need to take this pin out. This pin right here. Apparently my phone wasn't filming. So the, uh, the bar right here looks a little bit straighter. I pulled the clutch pedal out and straightened it out a little bit. So now we can take it's like a little washer and then we'll take the arm off the pedal here, or try to. Oh, there we go. Now we're gonna take this hose off right here. Got this little clamp holding it on. Uh, this hose goes up here to the clutch fluid reservoir. Loosen this up with the flathead screwdriver. Oh, there we go. Right row, we leaking everywhere. Probably should have sucked that fluid out of there before I started this, but uh, you know, that, that we don't think about things like that. I finally got this thing broken free. I don't know if this master cylinder here is original to 1988. It sure looks like it could be. Uh, there's a hydraulic line that goes from this down to the slave cylinder. So you got a half inch wrench right here on the bottom. Uh, this thing right here, this flange nut, whatever this thing is. I have been fighting this thing, I, I bet at least an hour. I mean, I've had my wrench on there. I don't have a brake line wrench. I've just been using a regular one and it's been kind of rounding over this nut. I've been hitting this thing with a hammer and uh, got all these brake lines and everything and power steering lines everything in the way so it's just you can't really get in here to work but thank goodness i finally got it i thought i was going to have to replace this whole hydraulic line all right there we go we there you can see that we got it free so now i'm going to unbolt these two bolts right here. I got a 13 millimeter deep well socket. So 13 millimeter, it's probably really a half inch, but I didn't bring one up here with me. So I'm using a 13 millimeter. We got that one nut off of there. Now we're working on this one. Probably would help to have some penetrating oil, but that's that's something I don't think I've ever even bought before. See if this thing will just pull right out of here. All right, there's the old one. Here is the new clutch master cylinder. I'm gonna leave this little plug in there until after I install this thing. Well, let's see if we can uh, Put her up in here. Get this hose out of the way. Oh, 
Oh, that looks nice. We're gonna put our nuts back on here. And the other one. Before I finish bolting that down, I did take a quick look under here and the rod will line up with the pedal. You know, I assume they gave me the correct one at the auto parts store, but before I went through all that trouble of installing it, yeah, I wanted to make sure that little piece would fit on the pedal and it does. I'm gonna tighten this down now with my 13 millimeter that's probably supposed to be a half inch. Okay, this, this little thing is in the way here. Let's try this bottom one first. We're gonna have to spin this over here a little bit out of the way. Hope that doesn't mess anything up. So I can get to this other nut right here. I got these nuts here uh, snug down. I'm sure there's like a specific torque you're supposed to put them to, but on this uh, 88, I think snugging is gonna be good enough. So we're gonna turn this, spin this back around a little bit here. Yep. Now we gotta try to get this rubber hose back on here. I don't know what this thing is. Is it something to do with the wipers? It is right in the way. That's... Okay, let's just reroute this whole thing. How about that? This is all dirty, gunked up. Uh, well, yeah, that looks, let me get you over here. That looks much better, much easier to get to than being back behind there. Flathead screwdriver. We're gonna snug this hose down. Now we need to try to take this red plug out of the bottom and put the hydraulic clutch line up in there really quick. Okay, we got the plug out of there. Yeah, there's a little rubber plug. I don't see any fluid coming out of there. Just uh, pushed that line up into the master cylinder there, and now we're gonna try to tighten this down. I've got the hydraulic line tightened down. We need to hook that push rod up to the pedal. So there's a washer on there. And we'll put this rod on there. We got another little washer. This clip. Now we got the clip started. Just going to try to Push it up in here. It's been a couple days since I worked on this truck. It's been raining, I've been busy. I continue to throw money and parts at this thing. So now we're gonna replace the slave cylinder. Bought a new one today at O'Reilly's. This thing was $37. I guess I have to put this thing together. The reason that we're putting a new slave cylinder on here is because I think this old one, it might be messed up. You can see how this slave cylinder that's on here, it is completely extended and it is pushing against the fork in the clutch. I have tried to hit that rod or that fork with a hammer and I've tried to push it back with my hand. I cannot get it to go back inside. So I, I think this is something to do with why I cannot bleed this clutch. I don't know what's going on. There's like air trapped in there or maybe the slave cylinder is frozen. I will mention that this truck has been sitting like this probably for a year. Uh, this clutch master cylinder messed up. It's probably been a year, honestly. I've been so busy, haven't had time to work on this thing. So if the slave cylinder was not messed up before, it's been sitting in this position for a year. I'm really hoping that my clutch is not messed up. 
I mean, I, the clutch is worn out in this thing. I want to replace it eventually, but I'm really hoping I can throw this new slave cylinder on here and that'll get me a couple of months of running around my yard before I need to put a clutch in. Right now I've got my half inch wrench on the hydraulic line that supplies the slave cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to break that free and take that hydraulic line off of the slave cylinder. That was actually pretty easy. Uh, that was not tight at all. It wasn't as hard as doing the master cylinder. So maybe I can zoom in and you can see the, uh, the hydraulic line has been removed from the slave cylinder and it's just kind of dripping there. Right now I'm up under the truck and this slave cylinder has got two bolts on it. I've also got a plastic bottle on that line. There's two bolts holding the slave cylinder on and I put a, a plastic bottle over that hydraulic line so it will quit dripping down here. So I'm gonna remove those two bolts. I went and got a ratchet, which is a lot faster. Definitely something wrong with this thing. I got the two nuts off of there and like this thing is kind of jammed in here. So I'm gonna have to fight it to get it out of here. I guess, I guess there's a rod in here that pushes, something in here that pushes out and pushes this other thing up against the clutch fork. And it seems to be just stuck out all the way. I may have just broke my finger. <laughs> okay, use a pry bar or a large screwdriver or something if you're gonna be messing with that thing, I don't know. This thing hurts so bad right now. It, I was wiggling it and it, it sprung up out of there and slammed my hand against the exhaust. <laughs> this is not, this does not feel good. Man, it is so hot out here. I'm not even uh, upset about my hand, really. Uh, I'm more upset that I'm gonna have to go clean up my finger here and I can't keep working on this dump truck right now. But let me show you, we got some good news. Well, the, uh, the good news is you can see this slave cylinder dangling here so I can get it out. But look here, oh, my finger hurts. Uh, the clutch fork thing has released. So hopefully I don't have to put a clutch in this thing yet. I'm going to fix up my finger for a minute here and, and hopefully I can crawl back under here before it gets dark and uh, put the new slave cylinder in here. I'm probably just a drama queen. I don't think my finger's broken now because I can actually bend it, but it is throbbing like crazy. When it smashed, it ripped my glove and I saw red all over the glove and I was in such pain and I was confused for a minute. I was like, is that blood? I think it just really squished it anyway let me go clean this thing up i've got the new slave cylinder started now so uh i guess i'm doing this right i'm just going to tighten down each side a little bit at a time there's the old slave cylinder i think it's just seized up in here i cannot push this back into here and the new one, I was able to push it down into here. I've got the new slave cylinder all tightened up. So I'm going to hook up uh, right here. You can see this little red plug, I think. I'm going to hook up that hydraulic line right here to where that plug is. I just got the hydraulic line uh, tightened down onto the slave cylinder there. Now we're going to fill this thing up with some fluid and try to bleed this thing. It is so hot and humid out here again today. I had to set my canopy up. I finally got the clutch bled on this Chevy R30. I have been fighting this thing for two days nonstop. It's been miserable, hot, humid out here. It's August in Georgia. Man, this truck needs some air conditioning. Now the clutch pedal is it's firm, very firm hard to push even all the way at the top there's not much play in it i think that's a good thing i 
Over the last two days, I was filming some of the bleeding process and I just got so frustrated and I just kept throwing money at this thing. So right now I'm gonna tell you how I did it, kind of walk through some of the steps. Gonna be easy to understand, I think. This right here is ultimately how I got this clutch bled. This is the Motive Products Power Bleeder. This thing worked great. The one I bought is the Model 0250. I got this thing from Summit Racing. It was $112. This is how I got it to bleed, but I'm gonna talk about this in just a second. Let me talk about some of the other things I did first. I wanna talk for a minute about the process I went through to get to this power bleeder. It's kind of important to me because I've read so many forums and watched a bunch of videos and it seems like everybody is struggling with bleeding clutches. Uh, the first thing I did was just, I had my brother over here and I tried to, the old school, he would push the clutch in and I would crack open the bleed screw and close it. And then he would push the clutch in again. I crack open the bleed screw and close it. That whole deal, you know, you do the same thing bleeding your brakes. We tried with one push of the clutch. I tried to get him to pump it up like three to five times and then do it. Nothing was working. I also tried gravity bleeding. Somebody else told me that, hey, that worked for them before. You know, you basically just open up the bleed screw on the slave cylinder and keep watching the master cylinder reservoir and just keep filling it up. And over time, it'll drain out. It'll fill the system up. The air will work itself out. That did not work at all. I went to Harbor Freight and I bought this brake bleeder hand pump. Now this thing has got some mixed reviews and I will say it works great. Uh, I paid $19.99. I actually got it on sale for $5 off. It's normally $24.99. This might actually help you in some cases. I, I'm not throwing this thing away. I'm going to hang on to it. It did not help for my situation, but this unit, it works. I mean, I could build up to 20 or 25. I think it's mercury. It's not... It's not pounds. I think it's like mercury of vacuum or something. But anyway, people were saying this thing was junk, but this thing worked very well. As far as holding a vacuum, I put it on the bleed screw and I would pump it up and it would hold vacuum. And then I would release or open up the bleed screw and the vacuum would slowly drop. The The problem is I, I, I was keeping it between like 20 and 25. It just wasn't working. It just it could not pull the brake fluid through the system. Something was going on with this slave cylinder because I detached the hydraulic line off of the slave cylinder, put this hose directly onto the hydraulic line, and basically I could bleed it that way. It would pull the fluid reservoir through the master down the hydraulic line into this pump. But anytime I had it attached to the slave cylinder, the slave cylinder just kept creating all the problems. So my quick tool review on this, I think this is a great kit here. Um, for some people, this $20, $25 solution, this may actually work for you. I'm gonna hang on to this kit. Okay, let's talk about the thing that actually fixed this clutch. The Motive Products Power Bleeder, $112. I went and picked it up at Summit Racing. I did get the model 0250. They have a bunch of different models, and I think this pump, this little container is all the same. I think the different models are just different adapters that come with it. So the 0250, it worked perfect for this square body, this 88 Chevy R30. Now the reason I needed it, it came with this little adapter here, this little round adapter. And that fits right on to the clutch master cylinder reservoir. It also came with this uh, flat adapter here, and I will use that later right here. This is my brake fluid reservoir. So you can put that flat adapter on here, and then you can bleed your brakes. One quick thing I will mention, this adapter that fits this uh, American Chevy truck here, it says European adapter. So I don't know what's going on with that. That was uh, confusing at first. If you're buying this kit separate and you need 
this adapter. You can buy all these different adapters separate, by the way. So if you need this adapter that fits uh, maybe a square body, your master cylinder, it's right here, the Model 1100 European adapter. This power bleeder was pretty easy to use. Uh, you basically unscrew this lid here and you put some brake fluid, some clean brake fluid in here. You can probably see where mine is right here. So I put one of these in there. Uh, that's 32 fluid ounces. And then I put the adapter on the hose here because it did not come like this. I did use Teflon tape on here. Uh, somebody had said before that this will leak if you don't put some tape on there. And I think the instructions even said, put some Teflon tape on there. And then you take uh, this thing right here. You take your reservoir cap off and you screw that thing right on top of here. This is where I had mine sitting right here on the inner fender. So that would have been attached to the reservoir over there. You know, you make sure this uh, lid here is tight and you just start pumping this thing. And I built up to between 20 and 25. Again, I, I don't, I'm calling it PSI. Oh, it says PSI. So I pumped it up to like 20 to 25 PSI. Now the, uh, the instructions say you need to look, I guess, in the owner's manual or the service manual. You need to find out what your clutch or brake system can handle because I guess if you pump up too much pressure, it could damage your master cylinder. Of course, I didn't do that. I just pumped this thing up between 20 and 25 and then it held pressure. And then I went down there and I cracked open the uh, bleeder screw on the slave cylinder. So it's a relatively simple process, but it took a long time to work. Okay, I say a long time, like 10 to 15 minutes it probably took to really start getting that air out. All right, I'm getting chased by bees. So it probably took about 10 to 15 minutes the first time to get some air out and to get some movement in that slave cylinder rod and to get a hard clutch pedal. I didn't have the screw open the whole time. And honestly, I never really saw the pressure drop, but you know, I would just kind of open the screw a little bit. Maybe I'd pump this once or twice and then close it then open it and close it. And sometimes I would uh, pump this once or twice. It might've lost a couple of PSI every time I'd open it, maybe not. It just, it was so slow to move this fluid. At some point it did start moving, but again, very slowly through the system. I went and checked the pedal. I had a hard pedal and then that uh, little rod down there on the slave cylinder, it was moving. So then I took this system off here. And uh, long story short, I lost my pedal again, basically. I, I, it probably had some more air in the system that kind of worked its way through. So I actually had to hook this up a second time. And I did the same thing, probably another 10 to 15 minutes. Just pumped it up to like 20 to 25 PSI and just kept opening and closing the uh, bleed, like open the screw, the bleeder screw and, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds, close it. And, you know, I could see kind of bubbles and, and stuff and fluid. Uh, one thing about this system here, I, sometimes you see people when they open the valve, like it's like squirting out of there, but this never did it. Even when this was pumped up or somebody was pushing on the clutch, when I open that uh, bleeder screw, the, the fluid is just barely kind of coming out of there. But right now, it's working. I've got a hard pedal, and I'm happy. So I may have to do this three or four more times. I don't know if after I get this thing started later and drive it around the yard, it may have another air bubble or something in there that I have to work out. But this thing is what did it. You know, it, relatively simple, but it was kind of a, a long and slow process. Once I got this thing, it was probably like an hour, really, to uh, to really get everything figured out. One last thing, I did choose to go from, I, I hooked up to the master cylinder and bleed down and then open the screw. I uh, noticed in the comments of another video, somebody, he didn't show it, but he said that he hooked his up to 
the bleeder screw down there and I guess pumped up the pressure, opened the screw, and then was forcing the air back up this way to the reservoir. So maybe that's an option too. My kit did not come with any kind of adapter to put on to the, the bleeder screw. So, and this hose is too big. So I guess you could buy some more adapters or something or just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and, and build something. If anybody has actually stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.